You make me sad. <laughs> Hang on. Train. Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier. And if you're having a strange sense of deja vu, don't worry, it's not just you. Yes, I did just do a video on a full dart conversion kit for the Ultra 2. This is a different kit. This is Gavin Fuzzy's kit. And unlike the previous kit, this one is designed to use the stock motors and wheels. And therefore you can actually convert it to the uh, full or the elite darts without having to rewire it. You can just swap out the cage, swap out the cylinder, and use it normally with the, with the stock wiring and the stock batteries and all that. And that is what I'm going to do first. I will do it that way. I will test the performance, uh, see how it compares, and then I will convert it to uh, a 3S LiPo, and we will see what happens then. So, this should be interesting. Let's get this thing open. Obviously that needs to come out and we're going to need to get this flywheel cage out and then we're going to need to get those flywheels off. Which I don't know if there's an easy way to get them off. The kit did come with a flywheel removal tool, but that probably only works on the uh, aftermarket. Cage. Uh, looks like we might have to do a little bit of rewiring because this doesn't have a mount for that uh, Jandor switch and it probably has motor braking so and I may have to take that board off in order to get them to fit onto that so I'm gonna go ahead and Pop out the soldering iron. Oh dear, I need to moisten my sponge again. Mm, moist. What an atrocious word. There. Where were we? Oh yeah. We were here. Gonna have to get the flywheels off the hard way, it looks like with leverage. Two wheels off. Yep, they will be slightly closer together, so they will need to come off of this board. No surprise there. But that's all right, because we needed to rewire it slightly. Anyway, how are we doing here? Our iron is still heating up. Oh, I see. It looks like these back here are... And that's probably what these screws are for, to, uh... Oh, okay. Yep, 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 yep. That's what holds the motors in, because they don't have standard threaded front holes like you do on all, most of our replacement motors that allow you to screw in that way. So these are... look like they screw in over these notches that uh, is are actually what were used to hold it in originally. There were clips on either side. Looks like he's used those. Okay, and he's labeled negative positive. Lovely, lovely. Okay. Yeah, we just need to wait for the soldering iron to heat up. The 
motors are in fact labeled. They've got the negative marked on them, so it's easy to tell how to orient them. All right, got the motors in. Let's put in the screws to hold them in place. So I got the cage in, I got it rewired, uh, fairly simple, like I said, since this is just essentially a strife. Blue wire goes to one side, black wire goes to the other side. I just used the original wires uh, and spliced it all in, so I haven't used any outside wire. I have, of course, used some solder, and it is now in place. I'm going to test it before I button it up and make sure I haven't wired it backwards. Gosh, that would be embarrassing. They are, in fact, backwards. How annoying. There we go. All right. Motors are now wired correctly. Let's get these flywheel cage screwed in. All right. Well, it works. It's still very noisy because those motors are not quiet motors. We should be able to fire it now. Oh, I forgot a bit. You have to dremel that little notch off both sides or it will not, uh, not feed. The darts will jam. So let me dremel those out real quick. Well, it does work. It is coming in between uh, 105 and 90, so it is decidedly lower than the previous kit, but that's running on double A's. Now, I'm going to pop it back open, I'm going to rewire it for LiPo, I'm going to run it on a 3S, and we'll see what happens. This should be fun. I will probably end up needing to put in, I may end up needing to put in a MOSFET uh, in order to keep from burning out my switch. But are we going to find out? I'm going to have to take the batteries out. screws all over the place. All right, it now has 3S. Uh, I haven't done the full rewire, I just wanted to see how well it would perform and see if it's even worth the effort. Um, if it works out, I will then do a proper re full rewire using a MOSFET and all of that, and that should be a lot cleaner. But let's see what kind of numbers we're getting now. Got between 100 and 126 was the top, so, uh, Frankly, it's, it's slightly underwhelming. Um, I'm going to check the charge on that LiPo. It's, 
it might not be all that fresh. In the meantime, I'm going to fully rewire it anyway. All right. Now I'm going to do the full rewire, and I am going to use an Out of Darts MOSFET board, one of the little ones that just has the power in, power out switch um, set up. Very, very simple to solder up. The red and blue wires that are coming off of our switch are what are going to be the, uh, the trigger, or the MOSFET trigger switch. All of the rest of this can come out now. I did. Right, the kit is built. It's currently wired for 3S and is hitting between 116 and 132, I think were the extremes. Uh, which is a little bit of an improvement over the uh, six double A's, but not as much as I was expecting, honestly. I was expecting to get more than that. I was expecting to get closer to 150, but in hindsight, it is stock motors and stock wheels, so that does actually make sense. Those Nerf wheel or motors, whatever they are, um, aren't obviously going to be the most optimal for you know, a 3S build, but. Uh, let's take this thing to the field and fling some foam with it and see how it does. Right, we're here on the range with the Gavin Fuzzy version. This is the 3S version. I didn't do any range tests with the, uh, the 6AA version uh, because it was dark when I did the conversion, so... Meh. Shoot's about the same. Uh, let's see what we can get. Let's alternate 25, 25, 25. Not too shabby. It is plenty accurate at 25 feet and has good zip to it. The trigger is still snappy. It catches a little bit, it feels like, um, on some firings. And that may be the ammunition because Adventure, Ho Adventure Force waffles are not the sveltest of dart heads, so it might work better on, say, men guns or other elite style darts that have less of a large head. I haven't tinkered with ammo types, but uh, let's let's try a from the hip cylinder dump at the 30. See if I can hit anything. Oh. No! A jam! A jam! Stop it! Behave yourself! No! What happened? What's going on here? How dare you? Ha ha! One more shot. Or maybe two more shots. Uh, right over the top. <laughs> Falling down the hill. Uh, yeah! Do I have another cylinder's worth of darts? In my pants. Not quite. There! No! Uh, yeah. The reload is still fantastic. Uh, I'm one dart short. There's one. Nothing to see here. All right, another full cylinder. We will do a cylinder dump at the 25 and see if we have any issues. We had a jam, mm, not, not for shame. Come on. 
They don't seem to be getting pushed quite far enough in. What was that horrible noise? I might not be pulling the trigger all the way. So I'm tempted to see if this will work with the extra extended pusher that I was given by um, Nerf Mods Australia. He sent me four of the, of the pushers uh, and only two kits. So I might toss that in there. It does seem like they're not always going all the way in. And I don't know if that's because Adventure Force darts are a little bit shorter. I don't think they are. They don't look like they're any further in the back. I think I might just not be doing a full trigger pull. I will try again, being a little more careful. Now I do have to go retrieve darts. Now I've reloaded. I think part of the issue might be that I didn't quite dremel down that little area right there enough. I may go in and uh, remove a little bit more material. Let's see, I'm gonna go for that 25 again. I'm gonna go a little bit slower, a little bit more deliberate trigger pulls, less trying to dump. Yeah, that's much better. All right, one more cylinder dump for fun, and then we'll go talk about this thing. All right, reloaded. Let's have some fun. I'm gonna go three, three, three. See how many I can hit. Well, I didn't get too many hits, but I didn't have any jams, so I think it was just a matter of I wasn't doing a a solid trigger pull and it wasn't quite getting them all the way in before I was letting go. So that's, that's on me. All right, to the shop, to the talks. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> so it did about what I was expecting, um, which is, is nice. Uh, it, it's still fairly accurate, especially at, you know, 25 feet, you would expect it to be fairly accurate. I hit, I got many a ping. Uh, firing from the hip, I was able to hit the man-sized target a couple of times. Uh, most of the rest of them went in the box, and that's that's what I would expect from uh, from a flywheeler at that range with, you know, not being as tuned as it possibly could be. And uh, there were a couple of jams, but I do believe those were the result of me not pulling the trigger all the way and the dart not quite getting to the flywheels before I let go, uh, which would result in it, you know, obviously not pushing, but then also not being able to rotate to the next cylinder, and it would, in fact, jam the, the trigger mechanism when you do that. So you need to make sure that you, you give it a good authoritative trigger pull and make sure that you've fired it before you move on to the next cylinder. Um, I also do plan to dremel out. I, I can actually see it now that I'm looking in there. There is a little bit of a lip on that bottom edge and since this cylinder rotates counterclockwise, whereas the other one was rotating clockwise, uh, that might actually be snagging it slightly. That is a possibility. I'm not entirely sure, but the cylinder print is as all of Gavin Fuzzy's stuff, absolutely immaculate and clean and smooth. Holds the darts nicely. It's it's nice and snappy. The, the darts are not going to fall out the back. They do feed smoothly. That is very, very nice. Um, and I do like that it's, it's a much simpler kit to install. It has fewer parts that you have to install and it requires doesn't require replacement motors or wheels. It uses the stock motors and wheels, uh, which is definitely an advantage if you're on a budget. So this, this was a neat kit. Very simple. Doesn't have all of the bells and whistles, but as a result, it is obviously less expensive. I will probably do a video where I compare this kit to the other kit side by side to explain the differences because there are some significant differences and depending on your level of skill or your budget, uh, one might suit you better than the other, also depending on your play style. I do believe that Gavin Fuzzy has a flywheel cage that takes aftermarket motors. This one came with the one that takes the stock motors. I will have to check on that. Um, it'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> it'll pop up here if I'm making stuff up. But I have heard of people using the Gavin Fuzzy kit with aftermarket motors, so I assume that exists. And I think it's actually really cool that he has both options. Um, because, like I said, that makes this a, a, a cheaper build uh, with a lot less work and fewer parts. So that is a, a neat aspect of this. And it, it still converts to nine rounds and fires smoothly. I like... How very dare you? Stock motors, man. What are you gonna do? <laughs> that was a horrible sounding sound. Anyway, 
Very cool. My thanks to Gavin Fuzzy. Links to his stuff will be down in the description. If you're interested, uh, check him out uh, as well. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Mwah!